I'm going where no man has gone before. Where no Disney YouTuber dare tread. I'm going above and beyond the Call of Duty, not because I want to, but because I have to. I owe it to you people. I owe it to tie everything up in a nice little bow, and I've done my absolute best to do that. The Society of Explorers and Adventures continues to grow very slowly as the Disney parks do. Every now and then we'll catch a hint of their existence at Tropical Hideaway while you're getting a Dole Whip, or maybe on the Jungle Cruise as you're riding through. You'll spot one of those telltale sigils on the bags of one of the members of the Lost Expedition. You'll notice a name pop up that you've seen somewhere before, somewhere in a different country. The Society's borders don't just stop at Adventureland, even though most of the references you can find to them do happen there. You can find references in Frontierland, and sometimes even lands like New Orleans or Liberty Square. But it goes further. Today, I have gone where no YouTuber has gone before. I have prepared for you a video you will not see anywhere else in the world. We are connecting not just rides like the Jungle Cruise to Pirates of the Caribbean, or rides like Tokyo's Tower of Terror to Mystic Manor. We're going much deeper than that. Today, I will be linking each and every single one of every individual attraction to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Every single ride from all over the world, every single park. We've been led to believe by Disney that not every ride ties back to SEA, only a certain few where they are referenced or otherwise brought up. But Disney has lied to us, friends. In their ambition to create a shared universe, they've created more than just that. They've created a universe that spans theme park rides, entertainment, movies, and TV shows. And here is how I'll prove it. Strap in, because it's gonna be a long one. Today, we are going to connect every single Disney ride to SEA. Where do I even begin with this one? Uh, how about the Disney Cruise Line? Everyone loves a good Disney cruise. I, I, I think, I've actually never been on one. But I hear there's a lot you can do on these ships. You can play putt-putt, you can go swim in the pool, you can go see a show, or if you're a child, aged 3 to 12, you can pay a visit to the Oceaneers Lab. A sort of activity center where you can play games and view activities relating to different Disney movies run by one person named Mary Oceaneer who you can find in this reunion photo of members of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. And it is from the Oceaneers Lab where our tangled mess of attractions begins. Real quick though, before we untangle this web, I need to go through a few ground rules with you all. Rule number one, no extinct attractions. If you're here to see how Horizons or Adventure Through Inner Space connect to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, don't worry about that. They're not gonna connect in any way, shape, or form because they're extinct. They're not around anymore. They don't matter. Oh, rule number two. No clones. I'm not going to mention every single railroad or carousel or haunted mansion. Each one gets mentioned once unless there is a different story aspect that connects it to a different attraction, but just once for each ride. Rule number three, no future attractions. I do have Cosmic Rewind in there because it's pretty self-explanatory where that fits into the timeline, but no new Splash Mountain. All of the rides in this list have to be currently operating right now as we speak. Except, like I said, Cosmic Rewind. It's pretty... He visited Epcot in the 80s. Last rule, movies count. Frozen and Frozen Ever After, same universe. Peter Pan and Peter Pan's Flight, same universe. Snow White and Snow White's Enchanted Wish, you get the idea. So, without any further ado, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and start this list almost four minutes into the video and begin where SEA itself began. At Tokyo Disney SEA. Oh, I get it. Two words. Fortress Explorations. Founded in 1538 by famous Renaissance man Leonardo da Vinci and a bunch of other friends, Fortress Explorations serves as the castle headquarters of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and as you search its halls, you'll find many, many different references to different members. Members like the one we've talked about already, Mary Oceaneer, but also new ones like Albert Falls, Henry Mystic, Harrison Hightower, and Barnabas T. Bullion. Now that overarching SEA story already connects us to a number of different rides. We have the Oceaneer's Lab, like we've talked about before, but we also have Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, the Tower of Terror from Tokyo Disney Sea, the Jungle Cruise, all versions of it, and of course Mystic Manor. Now the connection between all of these different attractions is sort of common knowledge, not to the average Disney Parks visitor, but to people like us, we know that these are all connected through SEA. And it's from here where the web starts moving outwards. 
let's just go ahead and do an, an easy corner of the web first. Let's do, let's do over here, all right? This one's pretty simple. It's that little corner of Adventureland. When you first walk into it at Disneyland in Anaheim, you have the Tiki Room, you have Tropical Hideaway, you have the Jungle Cruise, and you have the Indiana Jones Adventure. All of them are connected. Indiana Jones is mentioned on the Jungle Cruise, and they also cross over during this weird Halloween overlay they did for the Jungle Cruise at Hong Kong. Not really related at all to Disneyland, but it's still on there. You also have the SEA mentions at the Tropical Hideaway, where, you know, Rosita is out there talking to you. So that's the Tiki Room tied into the story. And, of course, Albert Falls, his oar is on the wall, tying it into the Jungle Cruise. Tropical Hideaway, Tiki Room, Indiana Jones, and the Jungle Cruise all part of the same sort of mini story right there, all condensed within a few meters of Adventureland at Disneyland. It's actually kind of impressive how much story they've managed to fit in. Since Indiana Jones is already confirmed canon in the storyline, we can go ahead and include Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull, which is sort of a clone of Anaheim's Indiana Jones adventure. This one's in Tokyo, though. And the roller coaster Raging Spirits, which takes place within the shared story of the land of the Lost River Delta, also at Tokyo. Here's where we're gonna get a little funky, though. Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar is a bar at Disney Springs, so Disney Springs is technically canon in the SEA storyline. Jock Lindsay, if you didn't know, is the airplane pilot at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark and also a member of SEA himself. And this is gonna seem like sort of a weird tangent. They do Christmas tree trails every single holiday at Disney Springs, or most holidays. It's sort of like the scavenger hunts they do at Epcot and California Adventure during the festivals. You walk along a certain trail and place stick on Christmas trees that you find along that trail. Sometimes you'll get hints regarding the story behind a certain attraction or Christmas tree that sort of ties into the overall story of Disney Springs, which we established is canon in SEA, and there just so happens to be a Christmas tree trail reference to the Dino Institute at Disney's Animal Kingdom, tying in Disney Springs, Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, you know, Fortress Explorations, all of those attractions in to Dinosaur, and by extension, Triceratops Spin, which is part of Chester and Hester's roadside setup at Dino-Rama that they set up beside the Dino Institute to sort of draw on the tourists who are visiting. So if you ever wondered what Bill Nye and Harrison Ford have in common, it's that they both are characters in the SEA universe. There is your tangential connection between Dinosaur and the Indiana Jones adventure. You're welcome. All right, now that's this half done. Now you're probably asking yourself, how about this half down here? How does how does Cars and Toy Story relate to the SEA? Well, it ties back to the Oceaneers Lab. Like I said before, it's sort of an easy way to sort of cop out the things that don't really connect because there's themed zones of the Oceaneers Lab, like this one. It's Toy Story themed, and that's how Toy Story ties in to SEA. It's part of the Oceaneers Lab. Now Cars, it's a bit weirder. Who did Lightning McQueen want to get sponsored by in the first Cars movie? Dynaco. And if you even don't want to count movies in this case, there are Dynaco signs all over Cars Land at California Adventure. Where does Andy's mom stop to get gas at Toy Story? That's right, the Dynaco gas station. Cars and Toy Story, even according to things like the Pixar theory, take place within the same universe. And that universe takes place in the same universe as Indiana Jones and Big Thunder Mountain. We all, we all know. Tiki Room, Jungle Cruise, those ones. So, through the Oceaneers Lab, we have attractions like Toy Story Midway Mania, Alien Swirling Saucers, Jesse's Critter Carousel, Slinky Dog Dash, RC Racer, Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin, and the Toy Soldier's Parachute. Some of those being foreign attractions if you don't know what I'm talking about. And through the Cars connection, we have Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters, Radiator Springs Racers, and Cars Race Rally, which is a spinny ride at Disneyland Paris. And Cars Road Trip, but I forgot to put it on there, so I'm just gonna sneak it in there after the fact. Cars Road Trip is on there too, it's also at Disneyland Paris. Okay, now that's this quadrant taken care of. We're gonna now move over to this quadrant up here, something a little bit more familiar. You guys know about Harrison Hightower, right? The owner of the Tower of Terror at Disney Sea. Well, he is a disgraced member of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, but he also has a brother, younger, older, maybe not even a brother, maybe like a great nephew or grandson, who married into the Hatchaway family. And you know the Hatchaway family from the Haunted Mansion, of course, in the attic, the bride, Constance Hatchaway, her last husband is George Hightower. They're both Hightowers, so the Haunted Mansion's in here as well. Which Haunted Mansion Holiday immediately is, gets added because that's part of the same story. Jack comes in and decorates the mansion for Christmas. And then, of course, how could I forget? 
Gene Lafitte! Lafitte's landing! Gene Lafitte. Gene Lafitte. Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Gene Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Yeah! Yeah, Gene Lafitte. Do I really have to explain it? Alright, come on, let me explain it. So here was the plan. Disney wanted to save money on the rafts going back and forth to Tom Sawyer Island. So in turn, Eddie Soto and his team of Imagineers decided to create an all-encompassing story for all of New Orleans Square that would cover not just Pirates of the Caribbean, not just Tom Sawyer Island, and not just the Haunted Mansion, but all three attractions, and tie them in to one singular story. The story of the legendary pirate lord, now dead and buried, very close by, John Lafitte. That's right, there was meant to be a tunnel underneath the rivers of America leading you from the Haunted Mansion through Lafitte's tomb to Tom Sawyer Island, which is going to be rethemed to be more piratey to fit in with Pirates of the Caribbean. But this isn't just something that was gonna be a thing and then was canceled. There still are pieces of lore hidden around New Orleans Square alluding to this still being a story. The bricked up tunnel in front of the Haunted Mansion, Lafitte's landing at Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course his anchor in front of both. So yeah, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, they're connected. Need I say more? Do, are you watching this channel? Do you really not know about John Lafitte? And uh, yeah, Jack Sparrow. He's in Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, Disney World, and Shanghai, the, the crazy battle for the sunken treasure one. So that's all the pirates tied together to the Haunted Mansion and to SEA for you. But also Star Tours. There's a direct reference to the Haunted Mansion in Star Tours. I know. See, in the Star Tours queue, there are two geese, I mean, G2 droids, one of which sounds uh, suspiciously like a pilot I know. One of them scans luggage, though, and if you pay super close attention to one of the bags he scans, you'll see that there is a hitchhiking ghost trying to make its way to Endor or something. I'm, I'm not sure where these tours go these days. Actually, no, I do know where they go. Galaxy's Edge, the planet of Batu. Therefore, my friends, making the entire storyline of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, Rise of the Resistance, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, all of that canon within the Haunted Mansion universe, which means the SEA exists in the Star Wars universe. Yes. Oh, and also Wally appears in one of those suitcases in Star Tours, and Hal from Wally also appears in the movie Ratatouille, making Remy's Ratatouille adventure at Epcot canon in the Star Wars universe, and therefore canon within the SEA universe. Is it a bit of a stretch? Yes, but I mean it counts. And hmm, you know who else is in the movie Ratatouille? Bomb Voyage, you know, Mr. Incredible's arch nemesis from the very beginning prologue of The Incredibles, therefore making The Incredicoaster also canon within this larger timeline? And, you know, kind of by the extension, almost every single Pixar movie, but we're mainly focusing on Cars, Toy Story, Incredibles, and Ratatouille here. So here's what we're working with so far. Here is the entire sort of complete timeline and existence reality web of the SEA universe. Don't worry, there's a whole lot more. We're only about halfway, maybe a little bit less than halfway done, but this is what we have so far. What do you think? Good. Welcome, ghouls and gremlins, to the scarier side of offhand Disney. Have you ever felt like you weren't quite in control of that mind train, taking you through that mind mountain, one that might have an old name that conjures up feelings of fright and terror within your very soul, one that makes a big thunderous impression on you? We're going to talk about the haunted minecars of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad now. The year is 1870. A man by the name of Barnabas T. Bullion is sailing down a river expedition on the Colorado River with his friend, Jason Chandler. Both are members of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and what they would come across on that river expedition would change the course of the rest of their lives forever. After sailing through a clearing, they came upon a massive mountain, one whose spires stretched toward the sky. Bullion and Chandler stepped out of their boat to investigate this mountain, with its tan orange peaks reaching all the way to the sky. After some exploring, Barnabas stumbled into a cave, a very large cavern where drops of water would drip down the stalactites on the ceiling onto different colored pools on the floor. 
It is in this room where Bullion struck it rich. He found a gold nugget that he would use later on in life to purchase the Big Thunder Mining Company from one Henry Ravenswood from the nearby town of Thunder Mesa. And that he did, for how much, we don't know. The mining company would mine the gold from that very same mountain. Although the natives and various locals advised against it, Bullion kept digging deeper. Until at last it seemed the mountain had had enough, and a flood and earthquake descended upon the town of Tumbleweed. The small nearby town of Rainbow Ridge remained seemingly unaffected, but the other nearby settlements, Grizzly Gulch and Thunder Mesa, received their fair share of natural disasters. After all the trouble surrounding the mining of gold from Big Thunder Mountain, it seemed that the mountain itself was cursed. And that was where we came in. Locomotives carrying the gold between Big Thunder Mountain and the towns of Rainbow Ridge, Tumbleweed, Grizzly Gulch, and Thunder Mesa had been running on their own for some random reason. Nobody really knew why. And that's the story of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, but how does it tie into the SEA besides Barnabas and Jason Chandler being members? I'm sure many of you are familiar with the story of Phantom Manor and how the founder of the Big Thunder Mining Company, Henry Ravenswood, eventually sold it off to SEA member Barnabas T. Bullion. The Thunderbird and the Earthquakes all of that is connected to the angry spirit that resided within Big Thunder Mountain. Barnabas and Henry Ravenswood both sort of equally to blame here. But I mean, I mean, come on, everybody knows Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and Phantom Manor are connected. That's sort of like baby's first SEA lesson. Barnabas, Henry, they're all tied together in the story of Big Thunder Mountain. What you might not know though, is that they are also connected to three other attractions, namely the Mark Twain Riverboat, the Sailing Ship Columbia, and the Grizzly Gulch Minecarts. What's the Grizzly Gulch Minecarts? Well, you see, the Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Minecarts, probably one of the longest attraction names in the history of the Disney parks, is the Hong Kong Disneyland equivalent of Big Thunder Mountain. The ride takes place in the land of Grizzly Gulch, a mining town similar to Rainbow Ridge and Tumbleweed that is actually mentioned at Rainbow Ridge at Disneyland. You see, right there on the sign, it says it's a long ways away, but it's actually pretty close. Story-wise, they're all near each other. Big Thunder Mountain itself is mentioned by the captain of the Mark Twain as you approach the station. We're now heading back into civilization along the Rio Grande. Off in the distance are the towering buttes of Big Thunder Mountain. And both the Mark Twain Riverboat and the sailing ship Columbia are mentioned at Pelican Landing, the new dining area in front of the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Boom. Oh, and also the Western River Railroad passes through the town of Stillwater Junction, which is sort of in that Grizzly Gulch, Thunder Mesa, Tumbleweed, Rainbow Ridge area. Well, partners, here's what we have so far for the entire conspiracy web. Now we've got all of Adventureland, Frontierland, and a couple of random ones thrown in there like Toy Story and Cars. But now we need to do a little bit of a lightning round for Disney's Animal Kingdom. And honestly, in this case, thank goodness for the Skipper Canteen. If you didn't know, the Skipper Canteen is the headquarters of the Jungle Navigation Company, led by Alberta Falls, granddaughter of Albert Falls, member of SEA. They have a bookshelf leading into a secret SEA room. Well, not really secret. It's a dining room that's themed around SEA. And the books on that shelf are all Easter eggs relating to different aspects of SEA and different Imagineers who worked on these attractions. Like you have the Harambe Chronicles, which is a reference to the village of Harambe in Animal Kingdom, where Kilimanjaro Safari takes place. And you have a book called Everest Expeditions in Search of the Yeti, which obviously is a reference to Expedition Everest, which takes place in Anandapur, which is where Kali River Rapids also takes place. Kali River Rapids, for my Californian friends, it's like Grizzly River Run, but in Asia instead of in California. So, uh, massive thanks to Skipper Canteen for making this video possible. I don't know where I would be without them, probably scrambling to find a way Expedition Everest connects to all of this. Although Harrison Hightower, who looks a lot like Joe Rohde, wrote the book on the Yeti. I mean, so if, if you know, you know. I personally, you know, kind of bulldog this one in a way that is, doesn't always make me popular, but I will fix the Yeti someday, I swear. Uh, <laughs> Another quick one, Soaring Fantastic Flight starring Camilla Falcone, yes, C-member, 
The pre-show features the Karak, a crocodile dinosaur-like creature that is also featured in Roaring Rapids at Shanghai, so those two are in there now. But now it's time to get into the real nitty gritty. Let's go ahead and talk about Avengers Campus first and foremost. Two connections, you can either take the Marvel-themed area of the Oceaneers Lab on the Disney Cruise Line, or you can take the book written by Chairman Clench at the Skipper Canteen, who appears later on in Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. There's your connection to the Avengers. Yes, Albert the monkey is letting the magic out of the box, Hatbox Ghost is tormenting people who ride through the Haunted Mansion, and somewhere in the future, or our present, Captain America is telling the Avengers to Assemble. No! Same universe. Kind of. The Avengers Campus isn't the MCU, but it's the, it's the same idea. So, all of Avengers Campus, meaning Web Slingers, the Iron Man Experience, Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, and I know I said no unopened attractions, but Cosmic Rewind is in there too. And, you know, since Peter Quill exists in this timeline, wouldn't that mean all of Epcot existed too? So, is this one a cop-out? No. It's a way to explain all of the Epcot attractions that you don't think would tie into SEA with SEA. Clench, Skipper Canteen, Mission Breakout, Guardians of the Galaxy, Peter Quill, Epcot, Living with the Land, the Living Seas. You have rides like Test Track, Mission Space, all of that exists in the Avengers Campus timeline, which exists in the extraterrestrial timeline, which exists in the SEA timeline. He's pictured in front of Spaceship Earth. I mean, this is all canon. Epcot is a thing in this timeline. Epcot exists. And if Epcot exists, and that purple dragon is trapped in the Collector's Fortress, there's a tie-in to Journey into Imagination. Journey into Imagination, made by my friend Tony Baxter, is part of the SEA storyline. We're just getting started here, folks. Harold is in the queue for Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, so th there's the Matterhorn for you. And Figment also makes an appearance in the movie Inside Out, so Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, consider yourself a part of SEA. Honorary, not like officially. Switching gears, here's a little history lesson for you. Did you know they made a series of educational videotapes in the late 80s starring Figment, the friendly purple dragon from Journey into Imagination? But it wasn't just him. He co-starred along a bunch of familiar Disney characters you may recognize, like Alice from Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan from... Peter Pan. <laughs> Tink! Tinkerbell! Where are you? Figment? Peter Pan! The very same characters from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland at Disneyland and Peter Pan's flight from attractions all over the world. There's that connection. And Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope appear inside the Imagination Institute at the end of Journey into Imagination, and Donkey Kong appears in Wreck-It Ralph, which also appears in Tron at Electronica and in the movie. So Tron Light Cycle Power Run exists in the Figment Cinematic Universe, therefore the SEA theme park matic universe. And of course, branching off from Alice in Wonderland, we have attractions like the Maze at Disneyland Paris and the Mad Tea Party right next to it. But we can also find Alice's Village and the White Rabbit's Rabbit Hole in Storybook Land, where Snow White's Cottage also appears, which implies that Snow White's Enchanted Wish and the Seven Dwarves Mine Train take place within the Storybook Land Cinematic Universe, connecting it there. Yeah, now we're really reaching. Going back to the Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan connection, they both appear on It's a Small World, and a bunch of other Disney characters also appear. We've got Pinocchio, tying in Pinocchio's Daring Journey. We have Ariel, tying in the Little Mermaid attractions. We have Nemo and Dory, tying in the Nemo attractions. Actually, is that Marlin? It's a clownfish, nonetheless. So, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage and another connection to the seas with Nemo and friends. And also, if you remember, Dory is the safety spiel instructor, giver, for the Pixar Pal Around. There's your fun wheel. I call it the fun wheel still. Sue me. Connection. Your hands and fins and tentacles inside the gondola. And keep an eye on those cute little ones. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's kind of Dory. And guess what corporation is in charge of Aquatopia at Tokyo Disney Sea? No, it's not SEA. Actually, it's the Marine Life Institute from a film called Finding Dory. 
It is a weird connection. It's like very ham-fisted IP. All of Mermaid Lagoon at Tokyo Disney Sea is themed to the Little Mermaid, so there's your connection. All the attractions in there are under the Little Mermaid umbrella. And you can't forget the Nautilus and the queue for the Little Mermaid Ariel's Undersea Adventure at Disney World, so we can tie that into 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea at Tokyo Disney Sea. What is the counter at? How many times have I said sea in this video? It's It's gotta be over like a hundred at this point. You also go through the secret base of Captain Nemo at Tokyo Disney Sea, tying in the whole land around Mount Prometheus together, not only with 20,000 leagues, but also into S-E-A. See, I said it different that time. Crush's Coaster. Nemo and friend Sea Rider, both finding Nemo, they count. Moving back now again to It's a Small World, we see Cinderella, hence Prince Charming's regal carousel at the Magic Kingdom, because Prince Charming is her true love, and dolls representing different countries all around the world from It's a Small World appear in Muppet Vision 3D, the best attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and I'll die on that hill. So I'd just like to take a moment to thank the trans-dimensional nexus that is Walt Disney's It's a Small World for making this list possible. Can't believe I just said that. All right, remind me again, who's the leader of the club? Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, Mr. M. Mouse, may I see your documentation, please? Mm-hmm, exactly, just as I thought. Mickey Mouse may not be in the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, but he certainly knows of them. How else would you explain the stamp in his passport? So if Mickey knows about SEA, then that must be, by extension, some of his neighbors in Toontown must. And that runaway railway happens within the storyline because that's Mickey and Minnie. It's the same character, lawfully and legally. And so Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, Goofy's Sky School, Mickey's Magic, all of it ties back to the passport, we see Mickey stamped with the SEA logo. It's all making sense now. Even Gadget's Go Coaster. Because it's in Toontown. Which means, since you can find a picture of Walt Disney himself at the end of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, that means Walt Disney, not like a character named Walt Disney, but the Walt that we know who created the Disney Company exists within the story that this Disney Company created. This story is so tightly wound, they've been planning this since 1901. Let's see, uh, Walt appears in the pre-show for Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, and Lincoln is in the Hall of Presidents, there we go. He's seen riding the Disneyland Railroad in that photo, so the Disneyland Railroad exists. They mentioned the monorail on the railroad. Look overhead, maybe a glimpse of a Mark 7 monorail. Autopia, the, the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes, they're all there, they're all part of the railroad. And if we go back to the whole Walt existing and being a real in this whole universe thing, the little girl in the Tower of Terror has an old school Mickey Mouse plush. And, have you have you guys ever heard the backstory for G-Force Records? Well, here you go, here's, how about, how about I tell you? Back in Hollywood, 1939, G-Force Records was a very popular record label that catered toward the stars and starlets of a young Hollywood. On Halloween of that year, five G-Force executives were at the Tip Top Club at the Hollywood Tower Hotel when the hotel was struck by lightning and five guests were killed in a maintenance service elevator. Waiting for you Waiting to step you. aboard. We invite you if you dare to step aboard because in tonight's episode, you are the star. And this elevator travels directly to the Twilight Zone. Pretty spooky, huh? Either way, G-Force Records continued until the 1990s when they partnered with Aerosmith to bring you to a concert really, really fast, and that's the Rock and Roller Coaster. And another real quick one, there's a Paradise Pier billboard, yes, the land that used to be at California Adventure, on Sunset Boulevard, right outside the Tower of Terror, and you can see there the Golden Zephyr. And what else was part of a Paradise Pier? That's right, Jumpin' Jellyfish, one of the best drop rides in any of the Disney parks. Alright, alright, take a breath. Okay, I will be the first to admit that that was a lot of attractions very quickly. Here is where we stand so far. All right, it's a lot of attractions, and uh, the map is filling itself out nicely, but we still have a little ways to go. I mean, we still have a, a good quarter of the map left to run through. So, right, we'll just take a breath. All right, we're going to talk about candles for a second, and then we'll hop right back into it, I promise. 
You know what relaxes me? A nice Magic Candle Company candle. That's right, if you didn't think this video was sponsored by the Magic Candle Company, I guess you would I get you technically be wrong on that front. Listen, folks, everyone knows the Magic Candle Company for their amazing candles that bring to mind different attractions and locations at the Disney parks, but did you know it's not all just candles? If you want clean hands at the park, they have sprayable hand sanitizer. If you want even cleaner hands at home, they have foaming hand soap that you can put in your Mickey head-shaped soap dispenser and use to your heart's content and makes you feel like you're at the parks even though you're not. Fragrance oils, diffusers, and yes, even air fresheners. So be sure to head over to the Magic Candle Company.com and use offer code offhand15 to get 15% off of your purchase and everyone make sure to go over there and even if you don't buy anything make sure to tell them all thank you for sponsoring this video the, the video that you're currently watching right now and uh, be sure to get the pirate's life and haunted candle burn them together at the same time you unlock the secret Jean Lafitte scent that's just an insider knowledge just for you all watching this video just for the offhand Disney folks all right that's enough of that let's talk about the people mover this this footage right here was recorded in 2021, and it, it really captures why I love the People Mover so much. Incredibly easy to board, and once you do, guess what you have to do? You don't, you don't have to do anything. You can just ride it around, you can have a conversation, you can point out the park to people. It's not like the Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean, where it's nice if people are respectful and sort of, you know, keep the chatter to a minimum, or if you want to, you can do it a little quietly. It's, it's... It's just a way to see the parks and talk about Disney and just relax. Anyway, <clears throat> how, how, how does it connect to SEA? Great question. Well, you see, when you pass through some of the attractions, the narrator will comment on them, namely the Astro Orbiter. Hop on board the Astro Orbiter. Pilot your own spacecraft as you take a spin around the planet and ascend to other lonely heights. The Tomorrowland Speedway. At the Tomorrowland Speedway, and of course, Stitch's Great Escape. Well, kind of. Your mission is to keep Experiment 626, the biggest little mischief maker in the galaxy, under control. I'll go now they've since stopped playing this audio because Stitch's Great Escape is closed, but if you look you can still see the Galactic Federation banner above the door. That's still there, as of this video at least, I'm not sure if it's there today. And where else does Stitch exist? That's right, the trans-dimensional nexus, the converging points of all the universes. It's a small world. And Stitch also appears at the Tiki Room in Tokyo and the Stitch Encounter, which is in Shanghai. It's kinda like a uh, Turtle Talk with Crush, except you know, the stitch instead. All right, one more thing before we leave this terrifying place forever. I know we're over small world, I'm over small world, this doll is looking at me weird and I just well, am ready to move on. Aladdin and Jasmine appear on their flying carpet. They also appear on the flying carpets of Aladdin in Adventureland, in Aladdin's Enchanted Passage in Disneyland Paris, and in Sinbad's storybook Voyage at Disney Sea on this map at the very beginning of the ride. So there, we have all of those attractions tied into Aladdin, the, the motion picture. Now we can move on back to Space Mountain, because the People Mover travels through Space Mountain, the narrator mentions it, it's in the story of the People Mover, and there is a board of open and closed sectors in Space Mountain, and I think you'll find this pretty interesting. <laughs> See? Told you. We see a lot of closed sectors inside Space Mountain, which are references to closed attractions, which we're not talking about in this video, but if you're interested, we have in the order you see here in the closed sectors, Fantasyland, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Fantasyland, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Tomorrowland, the Skyway to Fantasyland, Main Street USA, the Swan Boats, Fantasyland, Mickey Mouse Review, and Tomorrowland, Mission to Mars. But what we care about, what we're looking at in this case, are the open sectors, attractions that are still operating. In order of the open sectors, we have Fantasyland, Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Adventureland, Aladdin's Flying Carpets, Fantasyland, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Frontierland, Splash Mountain, Tomorrowland, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, and Tomorrowland, Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. 
Also, I don't think Disney thought this one through. And since we can find Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor on both the People Mover and Space Mountain, that means we can include Mike and Sully to the rescue and Hide and Go Eek. The Mickey's Philhar Magic reference, although we could tie it into Toontown, I'm tying it into Space Mountain here because that just seems more fun. Donald visits the Beast's Castle from Beauty and the Beast, which opens up the Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast from Tokyo, and Voyage to the Crystal Grotto, which features the Beauty and the Beast, as well as Tarzan's Treehouse, where at the end, in the camp, we can see Chip and Mrs. Pop and then also, by extension, the Swiss Family Treehouse in the Magic Kingdom because they play Swiss Capulca in Tarzan's Treehouse. You're welcome. Well, folks, it seems we are reaching the end of our voyage here. We still have two loose threads that we need to connect. Winnie the Pooh, right, is connected to Space Mountain. It's an open sector, so Honey Pot Spin, Pooh's Honey Hunt, and the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh, all of that happens in the same universe as Space Mountain. But we also have Mr. Toad's Wild Ride tying in with the photograph at Walt Disney World's Winnie the Pooh, but also the Country Bear Jamboree tying in with Disneyland's version of Winnie the Pooh. Thanks to these horrifying severed heads, you can find just staring while you're on the ride. And then there's one more. Goofy from Toontown that we talked about before has a barn at Storybook Circus in the Magic Kingdom. You know who else is there? Dumbo. And you know who's in the Dumbo movie? Casey Jr. That's right. Who else we have at Storybook Circus? We have, um, we have Pete. Nobody really cares about Pete. Salty the Seal, and he's all right. Oh, here's one with some promise. Humphrey the Bear, whose antics are off thwarted by wood lore. <laughs> Why are you always wet? You bathe too much. Who is the safety spiel narrator of Grizzly River Run, which takes place at Grizzly Peak? The, the Grizzly Airfield area, where also Soren around the world and the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail all take place. And that is it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't feel like we went through every single ride at all of the Disney parks all over the world. And I guess technically we didn't, like I said, we didn't go through any clones, like we didn't talk about the jetpacks at Shanghai, or every park's railroad that circles the, the you know, the Disneyland style parks. And there were some that I glossed over, like uh, the Grand Fiesta Tour, Donald's in there, he's in Toontown, there's, there's connections. This right here behind me though, is the full and complete map. I'm gonna... Share it on Twitter and put it in the description down below so you can look through it, check my work. If I'm wrong, I probably am. Please, please don't hesitate to let me know. But I'm pretty sure this is correct. I think I got this pretty much sealed up. So we can all agree that, you know, C is fun. I like the combined story that Disney is telling throughout the parks. The society helps tie together so much, and I think it brings in a cool story into the parks that's original to the parks. But without all of the intellectual properties that Disney has added to the parks over the years, things like Frozen, Beauty and the Beast, Ratatouille and Epcot. Without those, we wouldn't be able to make all of these connections, and now we can, which I guess is a sort of weird byproduct of all of these IPs coming into the parks. But it also is cool. And this is kind of some end card stuff right here though, but everybody, I worked so, so hard on this video, making that web and filming this. It went a lot longer than I thought. We're coming up on about 40 minutes now. So please, please do me a solid and hit the like button. Share it with your friends if you think it'd be interesting. Please just, just don't let it flop, don't let it die. This video is sort of a magnum opus. So, I mean, just, just do, do your thing, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And remember that this is not the end of the society. They're getting a TV show soon, and I'm assuming along with that TV show, they're going to get a wider and more pronounced presence in the parks. So prepare yourself for that. And until that time comes, I'll keep I'll keep connecting the dots that aren't there. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the end card of the video. Wow, you made it. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you for bearing with me through these 38 minutes of just pure insanity, connecting dots where there might not be any. Uh, I had a fun time making it. It was very long. It was very strenuous. But I, I, I do think it 
turned out pretty well, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. My co-host Disney Dan helped me out with the thumbnail for this video. If you guys enjoyed that, please go check out Disney Dan on his channel and also on our podcast, Foolish Mortals. There should be a new episode coming out any day here, so keep an eye out for that. There's going to be some big news in there for both of our channels, actually. All of the names that you currently see floating past you are the names of my lovely Patreon supporters. I would like to thank each and every single one of them, especially the gold tier patrons Adam, Jack, Justin, Bobby, Chuck and Michelle, Mr. Creepypasta, massive fan by the way, MW, Jennifer, Peter Real, John Morrow, Timothy, Ryan Junk, Caitlin M, Miranda, Obi-Wan Kenobi, John Sloan, Joseph Halkin, and Matt Zaglin. Thank you all for being such wonderful patrons. Again, if you did enjoy this video and you liked it, please, please let me know that you want to see more videos like this by hitting the like button, sharing it with your friends on any social media platform, or just through text, I guess that's what we do nowadays, huh? And hit, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media. I have the YouTube, obviously. I have Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm at Offhand Disney on all of those places. I think that's everything for the end card, everyone. That's, I mean, that, that's, there's probably more connections I missed, like I mentioned in the video. I probably missed one or two, but I'm pretty sure I got them all. Okay, well, that's the end of that. Everybody, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.